This gets me sales and people on my list at the same time. By the way, if you like videos on how to grow your customer list and build a real brand, then subscribe to my channel as I have new videos each week. It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, let's dive in. Hi, my name is Douglas Levin, and I built a 20,000 person messenger list ahead of the launch of our first product, which led to 20,000 in monthly sales within our first three months of launch. I also have a link to a free cheat sheet below with tips on how to take control over your e-commerce income. So you've gone through and set up your website and are starting to run traffic, but people just aren't buying. And you feel like it's never going to work. You spent all that time, all that money, all that effort, but you're just not seeing any dollar signs. So what are you going to do? You want this to work. Everyone's told you to have a website and push traffic to it, but no matter what you're trying, it's just not working. So the first thing you need to understand is it's probably not going to work immediately. Yeah, maybe you'll get lucky and it does, but if that happens, then consider yourself a unicorn. Because most of the time you'll get no sales, maybe a little bit of traffic, and then they're gonna bounce. So what do you do in that situation? Well, one thing I would recommend is setting up an exit intent pop. Uh, by setting up an exit intent pop, this accomplishes three things. It makes them more likely to buy, it gets them on your list, and lastly, it also gives you something to measure because actual data lets you improve over time. Business owners that look at how they can make something more successful, measure and look at data. That's how they improve. They don't make emotional decisions. And Optimunk is my favorite exit intent pop because it easily allows you to measure the data. So that's what I'm talking about today. So let's hop in and I'll walk you through how to set it up. All right, so we're in Optimunk. It's Optimunk, O-P-T, I-M-O-N-K dot com. Um, and first thing to understand is pricing wise, because I know a lot of people ask about pricing, there is, as of this recording, a free version available. So if you were to actually click on upgrade now, well, for me anyway, because I have an account, um, then you can see there's a free version up to 3000 page views, and then it goes on from there. So you don't need to even pay to get this started. So there's no reason not to start. Um, obviously, once you get over 3000 page views, Hopefully you're starting to get some traffic that's converting. It's actually worth it at that point, but um, uh, this gives you a great way to get started. So in terms of getting started with this, when you first sign up with Optimunk, you're gonna go through the process. It's going to um, uh, say, create an account. Then once you get there, it's gonna say, do you wanna create your first template? Um, it's also gonna want you to add your domain. So obviously you're gonna go to, if we're, we're talking about Shopify a lot of times, so you go to the Shopify uh, domain and get that. Um, and then it's also gonna ask you to add your uh, JavaScript as well. Um, so this is something that sometimes trips people up. Um, Optimum does have an option um, specifically um, if you don't wanna do it. I think it takes like about a day or so for them to set it up. Uh, so just follow the prompts. It's really, really easy um, to get started with that. Um, and once you, you get that stuff set up, then you'll see it kind of looks like this, right? Um, so here's, you see there's different options. Here's the home, campaigns, leads, settings, um, all these different options here. Most of them you're honestly not gonna need for the most part. Um, so I'm looking here at the homepage and then you can see there's campaign as well. So we're gonna start by looking at, I can get rid of that there. Um, we're gonna look at one of the campaigns I've got. You can set up new campaigns. So if you were to do that, you would just say set up a new campaign. And this is really slow. And then you can see a whole bunch of different templates here. Um, I typically don't like these templates. I will create my own, um, but for the sake of this example here, I've got one here. So um, you've got one, and then we're gonna scroll down and you're now in the campaign, right? Um, you also wanna set up your settings. Make sure that you do this before you actually do anything else. So um, you can kind of see here's edit settings, and then you see all these, all these different options as well. So when you click on edit settings, and then you scroll all the way down, and you see add integration. So this is where you're gonna connect because obviously the, the way that an exit intent pop works is that if you've ever seen on websites, whenever you're about to leave a website and then you see this pop-up that comes up um, and says, hey, um, don't leave, here's a 10% coupon or a 15% off or anything like that. That means that they were, their intent was to exit. So this pops up, right? Hence the term exit intent pop. 
Um, so it doesn't just have to be that people are leaving. It can be a bunch of different ways, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But um, uh, you need then to add an integration because if you can get people on your list, which we talked about way at the beginning, then uh, it's got to go somewhere, right? So you need an email autoresponder that's going to connect to. So whenever they get onto your list, it, um, it goes over to your email autoresponder. So that's where you would do it right here. So remember that's under settings and then uh, add integration. And I've already got, uh, I would say I use Clavio. So I've got that set up. There's all these other integrations you could set up as well. So if you go to add integration and then you can see like all of these different options here, um, a bunch of different options in terms of uh, email autoresponders, obviously MailChimp shows up. Um, you've got uh, active campaign, like, so you don't have to use Clavio, um, use whatever you want, but it integrates um, with Optimum, um, uh, most of the other email autoresponders. You also don't need to use Shopify. Um, uh, there's other ones that will connect as well. Um, so you just kind of see how that works here. Um, so then you want to add those up. It's pretty self-explanatory in terms of the process. Um, so once you've got that set up, the next thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is look at some of the other settings that are around. So you kind of see here, all right, when would you like the pop-up to show up? We talked about that a little bit before, right? Like, do you want it on the exit intent pop, right? So that's what I've got as a de the default, but there's a lot of other ones as well. If you wanna add more like triggers is what they call them. So when a visitor is about to leave, right? And you can ha also have it, do you want it on mobile or desktop or both, right? Uh, so you can set up this. If you want it, if they click on a specific area, if they've scrolled in X percent or X seconds, like, so you can kind of see it's very customizable in terms of the different options in terms of when to show it. Um, the other part you also want to do is who you're going to show it to, right? Like the the who, what, why, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so you have this here. Obviously, this one defaults to, to a number two times per hour uh, for a visitor. Um, so that there's a whole bunch of different options here. There's how many uh, how many times your message can appear for per visitor, right? So right now I've got that set up to two times per hour. I could set that to something else if I wanted to, right? You can see spend on page, spend on site, um, like returning a new customers. If you want to target versus for specific countries, right? So there's all these different things here. And then there's also these custom rules too, where um, like I've done it where I don't want it to be that they're reading my blog. I don't really want to interrupt them at that point because I'm trying to give them content. We talk about this all the time, right? How you want to actually give value. You don't want to just sell, sell, sell. Well, if you're pushing somebody to your blog um, so that you can give them information, um, then why would you want to interrupt that? It's not really about the sale at that point. It's about building trust. It's about giving them value, right? Um, so in those instances, I really wouldn't want my exit intent pop to show up. So then I could just set it up where it visits URL and then at that point, it's only going to be for product pages, right? So like uh, if you understand how so sometimes this works is uh, is they have like that uh, yourpage.com backslash and then there's like cart or products or something like that. That's the slug. Um, uh, so then you could set it up where it's backslash products, right? That's where it shows up because it means that they're checking out one of your products. So I only want it to show up whenever someone's checking out my product or maybe on the homepage or something along those, li those lines, right? So you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones here that you can set up and it's very, you can set up as many different ones as you want as well. So if you have different types of campaigns you wanna set up, I want one for people that are visiting my products. I want one where maybe I just wanna get them on my list um, for more content if they're going to my blog, right? Um, so you can set it up a whole bunch of different ways at that point, it's not just one size fits all. Um, so so this is what's great in terms of Optimum that you can do all that. Oh, and if you're liking any of uh, what I'm saying, I make sure to leave a like below. Next thing that you wanna pay attention to is the actual campaign itself, right? So we talked about um, the, the different parts that are within the campaign, like the settings themselves, right? So you now know about integrations and what that is. You now know the who's gonna see it and the when they're gonna see it, right? But now you actually need to create the, um, the pop-up. So we're gonna go back to home, right? And then I've already set one up, but I'm gonna walk you through uh, how you can set it up. So we're going to click in. And if you didn't have one, you would create uh, a, create a new campaign. And then from here, you can create, um, if you do, do the paid plan, then obviously you can set up AB, AB testing. That's, we talked about data and being able to measure. That's always great. You don't obviously need it when you're getting started. And also understand that you're going to need a lot more data to be able to make a decision anyway. 
So there's no real point in having enough, having A-B testing set up until you get enough impressions that you can make a determination on if this is working, right? So you can kind of see right here, we talk about data, right? So now you can see, okay, obviously like this is just a dummy account, so there's only one impression, but um, uh, you can see, okay, there's a uh, thousand impressions and I've got conversions of a hundred and okay, my conversion rate is 10%, like something like that. So you can now look and figure out if this is working or make tweaks and, and A-B test it, come up with different versions, all of these other things where now you can actually look at the data and, and optimize it over time. So this is definitely something that, that we talked about earlier, right? In terms of don't make emotional decisions. Um, so this is just data. You're looking at it as a, a objective uh, thing of like, all right, well, um, uh, I'm looking at variation A and that one has a 5% conversion rate. Well, um, uh, number uh, variation B has a 8% conversion rate. So, okay, well, that one's better. Let's see if I can get better, right? Like, so I'm gonna dump variation A, right? Um, so definitely keep this stuff in mind as you're going through it. So next we're gonna look at the actual campaign itself and how to do some of those things. So we click in it, and this is where you get to obviously like the setup part. So what's gonna look like? Um, what are you gonna count as a conversion? Different things like that, right? Um, so you, so I'm setting this version up right here. This specific campaign is that somebody goes to just, it's it's not set up that it's a specific thing in terms of like, a, like just a page. It's just anywhere because we're just obviously trying to explain it to you right now. Um, so this is just, all right, you are about to exit. Um, would you like to get 10% off? Um, and uh, one of the things I've also seen that works a lot of times is a timer sometimes. You don't have to do anything like this. It's just how it's been set up and I've seen works a lot for me. As we're going in this, uh, you can also see like, here is the setup of it. So the way it's gonna work is they, they will see this first. And then once they were to click on, yes, get my 10% off coupon, they will go to the next one, which is a thank you, right? That's what you can call it, whatever you want. It's that's what it defaults to. Um, and then from there, they're going to um, give their email address and then get their 10% coupon, right? So that's the flow. Um, so if we're actually clicking on any of this part, you can basically change it however you want. Um, so you can kind of see, all right, if I'm gonna edit the column, there's different styles, right? Do I want it to be the entire thing? Do I want it to be side by side? Do I want three? Um, so you can you can see it all the all of these different types of options if you wanna mess with it and, and change it up. So here's the padding, right? So you can kind of do a bunch of different options here in terms of how you want it to look. And you can also see on this side, this is on desktop, this is on mobile, right? So this is what it's gonna look like on mobile. Uh, so you can just check all these things out. So, and here's the layout right on the left side. So you can kind of see as I'm going through it, this is a block, right, right there, this is a block. And then from there, I can edit that block however I want it to be. If I wanna to go to a piece of text, right? This specific piece is text. Now I can change it. Do I want it to be a different color instead of white? Do I not want it to be bold? Obviously I can change that here. And here's the text color, right? And here's the size, like all of these, do I want to underline it or italicize it? Like it's very customizable. Um, uh, you can kind of do it however you want. There's even text uh, shadow and background, right? So it's, it's and, then, and we talked about the padding as well. So there's a lot you can do here in terms of making it look however you want it to look. So if you find somebody, when you're, we talk about the idea of being able to model from people that work in, and you're looking at other people that are really successful. If you go to their website, and you put, you're like, hey, I really like what they're doing there. The odds are you can make it look like that on here and then just obviously put in your product and, and however you want to do it in terms of some kind of a lead magnet you're going to give them as an incentive to opt in, right? Um, so you kind of see all these different things here. It's pretty simple in terms of the process. And then um, as you're going into, uh, the one thing I also want to make sure that you guys see is here. All right, so when you're looking at the buttons themselves, so you can set it up a, a few different ways here. So this is the button, right? They're gonna click on this, right? And they're gonna get 10% off, right? Um, so on the click, it's gonna go to the next page in this funnel, right? So that's right here, the thank you. Um, and then the thank you is where they're going to put it, actually put in their email. Uh, and you're also gonna, we talk about the idea of, of data, right? So this is where you're gonna report this. Are you gonna report this as a conversion or not report it or report it as they rejected and they didn't want it, right? So in this example, obviously, if they say no thanks, then they don't want it, they're, then they're rejecting it. Um, but if they click through, they haven't actually 
given you their email yet, they've just taken the first step. So I'm not gonna count that as a conversion yet. Versus if they were to go on thank you on the next step, right? And then they actually did click here, um, then at that point I would mark it as a conversion, right? So just make sure that you set that up and then you kind of see up here in the corner um, that you, if you, once you're done with all this, you want to set it up. Um, so the, uh, then the other, last part with this, you also want to pay attention to is, all right, after they do whatever step it is, if you don't want it to go to the next step, then you can have it do a redirect. Here I've got, um, they're going to get a 10% coupon, right? So then I just created a simple 10% uh, discount in Shopify. Um, and then they're going to go to that link where they're going to get it added uh, to their part or whatever it is that they're, they're setting up right now um, immediately. And now they're going to get access to 10% off in their, in the Shopify store. And um, so then at that point, they've already got it, right? Um, and then from here, you can also set it up in Klaviyo or uh, I would assume most other email autoresponders, once they are opted in now, um, they're now on this list and it gets redirected. Um, in Klaviyo, um, you can now set it up where they're going to be added to a specific um, uh, flow, right? So a specific a list as well. So if I am going to send out um, basically a nurture sequence for all of the people that went to my website and clicked in that and became a subscriber, right? Because they're now on my list um, and they, they opted in for this exit and 10 pop, right? So now I can talk to them. Um, so I can also set it up where they don't get that uh, nurture sequence if they bought. So in this example, let's say that they click on this 10% coupon and they immediately go and buy. Then I don't, I absolutely don't want to do a nurture sequence anymore because they've already bought. Maybe I want to do a post-purchase sequence at that point. So that's where you can all set all that stuff up in Klaviyo where you have all these conditions and things like that. But if they don't, because a, a, a lot of people are not going to buy immediately, right? They'll check out the website for a second. Maybe they'll opt into your exit and 10 pop and then they'll eventually bounce. So I don't want to give up on them. I want to go through that nurture uh, process where I can eventually get them to buy, right? Because most people, when they're, when they're trying to get customers, all they care about is, oh, well, um, uh, they didn't buy immediately. So that means it's terrible. That means um, they bounce and, and I'm not going to get any sales. You need to look at it from the perspective of, they just aren't ready to buy right now, right? And there could be a thousand different reasons that they're not ready to buy. Some of it could be that they don't know enough about you. They don't know enough about the problem. They don't know enough about your product, any of that stuff where they need to get educated. Or it could just be as simple as um, they just bought something and they are going to need to buy again in 30 days. So you want to be top of mind and give them more value, more content, other stuff along the way, where once they're ready to buy, then you can actually just uh, go, hey, here you go, right? Um, so to do all that, obviously you need them on your list and then you can start the nurture sequence. So that's what great, the, what's great about Optimunk. And then obviously I'm talking about Clavio specifically where you can connect them and now they click on this and they're in there and now they're on your list and you can start the nurture sequence, right? Um, so that's all it is right here. And then if you wanna redirect to another page, then obviously you can do that right here. And then you would just obviously redirect them uh, to whatever URL you want. So it's really simple to set up, but I would say if you're having issues at all um, with converting or getting people, traffic to, to get to your page, get on your list, um, this doesn't really cost you anything, right? Um, it, th this is a free version to do. So until you get to 3000 people that are viewing your website a month, it's, um, it, it's not gonna cost you anything. And then last thing here is, okay, let's go and see this in action. And we're gonna look here and we're gonna exit and look, there it is, right? I exited the page and now I see it right here. And then if I go, obviously get my 10% off coupon, now it's asking me for me to put in my email, right? And then once I do that, it's gonna redirect me and that's it, right? So it's really simple uh, set up. Um, so I would say, whatever you guys are doing, add this, it's free. Um, and it will help you in terms of getting people onto your list, starting to be able to measure and track the data and hopefully get some sales along the way too. If you're looking for more tips on how to take control of your e-commerce income, then click the link below in the description for a free cheat sheet. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips on how to grow your list and build a real brand.